to posterity. Ah, what an age it is when to speak of trees is almost a crime for it is a kind of silence about injustice and he who walks across the street, is he not out of reach of his friend? In trouble? Up in the legend many times made, the legend says, but many times more complex, I believe. Um, turned away from poetry after the first book. We, uh, maintaining a silence from 1935 to 1960. He made it much more complex than simply an ethical issue. In his uh, essay, The Mind's Own Place, I think it's more complicated than just ethics. It seems also an aesthetic issue. In discussions and in readings that I've done, um, in discussions in particular with Rachel Blau, Duplessis, and, and in reading Michael Davidson and Joy Katz, among others, um, it seemed that he turned his attention away from writing to tend to and to respond to the turmoil he saw around him, but it was never as simple as that. When I came to hear the legend of the 25 year silence as it was described, I was a young poet enrolled at San Francisco State University, taking classes with Catherine Fraser and Michael Palmer, working at the Poetry Center that hosts me now. I too had a sense of a world that needed tending and a poetry that nevertheless sustained me. The world I experienced was a freezer locker of the Cold War, to, Cold War, the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. They were locked in to perpetual antagonism, heavy handed surrogate wars, intervention into history, capital H, that in retrospect were there to give co coherence to their own tattered societies. They tried to stop the clock. The actions of each drew into its machinery of distraction and power keeping the status quo, always locked. They called it detente, cultural expression, social movements, and political vision forever in a waiting room. I came of age during Pax Americana, a fisted and, uphol and, fisted and upholstered with unholstered violence, mixed messages about merit dangled rewards of human dignity, if one waited with gloves amidst the hierarchies of destiny, class prejudice and white privilege. This was what this was, I think, more visible to me than it had been to George Oppen, for I never felt free to make his decision, his choice that language or art could command my exclusive attentions separated across an unbridgeable divide. <clears throat> 